Hello, and welcome back to another episode of The News You Missed. It's been quite some time, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try and spike this bad boy up and get a couple videos out every now and again. So check back here, click subscribe, and I'll try to keep you up to date with the video games news that you missed. Super Mario Bros. 35th Anniversary Direct really inspired me to jump back into this and talk about this. I wanted to discuss that the 3D... All Stars is coming out. So this is for the Super Mario 35th anniversary and the game's title is Super Mario 3D All Stars. It's an homage to Super Mario All Stars that originally appeared on the Super NES. Now the reason that they're doing this is quite obviously the fact that they want to encompass Mario's crowning achievements on each of the various systems that have come out since the Super Nintendo. And if you count the Super Nintendo's All-Stars that's currently available on the Nintendo Switch, you can find that they technically have every video game system and every Mario covered pretty much all available currently today. Now this is going to be a title that's going to be Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy all built onto one Nintendo Switch cartridge, which is really, really nice, and it's going to be available September 18th, 2020, but it's only going to be in limited quantities, so you guys better pre-order or grab them whenever you can, because scalpers most certainly will also. Be sure to get your hands on a physical copy as soon as possible. Digital copies are going to be around, and you're probably going to be able to access it even up till the last day if you want it digital. But physical copies are going to be hot, and they're going to be gone. Now, I've seen some minor graphical improvements on the original formulas, and more than likely, when they release this game, we get our hands on it. There's going to be a lot of investigation on whether or not certain glitches and things have been fixed. And quite so, I'm sure Nintendo have updated certain things. But it very well could just be a straight ROM rip of each one of the games, and whatever they did with their magic programming, and they just upscaled it a little bit to look better on big TVs. This is a potential and a possibility. And one other point of contention I've had with this is that it's Super Mario 64, which it's great that it's being introduced to new people and that's wonderful. However, the DS version of Super Mario 64 is a much more complete experience and overall the better game, I would say, without question. Again, you lose nothing with the Super Mario 64 DS. You gain some of the best mini games that are ever available on Mario games. And atop that, you also get to play with four other characters, a more concrete story, and levels that end with epic boss fights, not just Bowser and a, a couple one offs. You really get an all encompassing experience with Super Mario 64 on the DS, the remake that appeared so many years ago. However, still, I must say that many people are going to be introduced to the Super Mario 64 game that they never ever got to play, either because they had a PlayStation or they just couldn't afford a Nintendo 64, whatever. I was very blessed and lucky that my grandmother bought a Nintendo 64 to keep at her place so that whenever I had to go over there or I got off school and didn't want to go home, instead I wanted to go to her place. I was able to play some 64 games. But had my grandmother not, I would have never had access to a Nintendo 64 whatsoever unless I went over to a random friend's house. My direct friends didn't have a Nintendo 64, and the one that did ended up moving away. So once again, it just reinforces the idea that this is coming out and it's giving access to a lot of people that originally never had access to it. People who just never wanted to emulate. Even though Nintendo 64 emulation is so simple and easy and can be done on almost any modern computer system these days, it's still a challenge for certain cell phones, lower grade cell phones, things like PlayStation portables where they wouldn't emulate it that well. 
that said, I do think it's great that this is being introduced uh, to a much wider audience of people who never originally got the experience of the greatness that is Super Mario 64. It's a timeless classic that remains true today as one of the greatest games ever to exist. Nintendo knocked it out of the park with this one, and I promise you, I would rather go back to Super Mario 64 rather than the other two games, Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Sunshine. Now, moving forward to Sunshine, the same principle applies. Whether you had a PlayStation 2 or an Xbox, or no system at all, or PC Master Race, or you were relegated to a handheld system, or God, God forbid you still had something like a Dreamcast at that point in time, and you didn't have any other options to access these games, this is really, really nice that you get to experience it. Mario Sunshine is not one of my favorite series, and it, in truth, I, I really dislike it quite a lot, just for the simple fact that you have a talking water receptacle that is basically Navi since the Zelda 64s. It's your partner that's going to tell you important stuff, I, I guess. Nintendo really has a habit of introducing these partners to spew exposition every now and again whenever you need it, or, or drop hints, or, or things like that. I just don't like it. It really turns me off to the series, and it always has. Every single one of these lame partners really bothers me. I digress, though. The point is that it's still a very comprehensive and complete Mario game, despite the glaring plot holes and how ridiculous the plotline is, and man, the ending is just as equally ridiculous. It's still a fun game on the Nintendo GameCube, and at the time, a lot of people really enjoyed it, including myself. I, I did like it a lot, but I gotta tell you again, if I had the choice, I would just buy Mario 64. But yeah, whatever. Moving on to Super Mario Galaxy, this is a game that I... I don't like it all. Again, I know I'm, I'm that guy, and a lot of people are going to sit there and say, well, okay, uh, so you must really be one of those who likes old games only, but uh, Super Mario 64, while being quite old, is not as old as the NES Marios, and I like that, meaning I like modern 3D Mario games, they just have to be a certain way. I enjoy Super Mario 3D Land, which by the way is also coming to the Nintendo Switch. Super Mario 3D World, not 3D Land. I confuse them quite a lot. Uh, it's, it's the same type of game, just much bigger and on a, a much greater graphical level because it's the console version. So that's coming to Switch also. Uh, but when it comes to Super Mario Galaxy, I'm just not a fan. Uh, the the game allows you to like point the nunchuck and shoot stars and use a lot of motion controls because it was pushing the Nintendo Wii's motion controls at the time. And I'm not a fan of motion controls no matter how refined they are. Even though I really do enjoy games like Metroid Prime 3 Corruption where they did a great job with motion controls, there are many mistakes that I made while playing through motion control based games that I would not make with a regular controller. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, far from it. My point being, those simple mistakes I wouldn't make with a game that required a basic controller. I am 100% sure that because the game would require an entire rework, they will still use the motion controls for this game. The initial niceness of it, the, the newness of motion controls was nice and it was fun and I'll never put down games that did it great. Wii Sports is still a game that people really enjoy and love and it was just a pack-in game showing utterly what Nintendo could do with motion controls, but for Super Mario, it's just not really my thing, and I apologize to anyone who dislikes that. I would also like to add that there is no Super Mario Galaxy 2 here, which arguably is the better version between the Super Mario Galaxies, Nintendo having more time to develop and thoroughly go through uh, the game and fix any issues and add some new issues and features that they thought would be fun for the player to encounter and overcome. 
I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, how do you feel about Super Mario 3D All-Stars? I've got to tell you, just based upon GameCube and reseller prices alone for the actual physical cartridges and discs for this package, you're getting a deal if the game itself is going to be priced at $60. Even if you buy it new for a little bit more than that, and it's a physical cartridge and you have to order it, that's still much, much cheaper than what you would pay on eBay for things like the N64 cartridge or the disc for Mario Sunshine. But at the end of the day, it is your money, and if you'd like to play it on the original systems, then I suppose you're going to be paying out the nose to get the originals. Yeah, you could always emulate it. I know the Wii U had Super Mario 64 on it, and I know that you can emulate the GameCube pretty easily nowadays too with a decently powerful computer and an okay GPU. It's not hard to emulate the GameCube. But at the end of the day, it is, again, it's your choice what you want to do with your wallet, so I'd like to hear from you. Are you going to be buying this collection, or will you pass? You let me know in the comments down below. Now, I've been your host, the Grandmaster Gamer, and I hope to see you back here again with another episode of What You Missed. Or should I say, the news that you missed.